Hey everybody, <coughs> this is Rich and this is beekeeping, South Florida beekeeping with Rich. Um, cold front came through last night, blew through here. This cold front wasn't even supposed to get here. It was supposed to stall out before it got here, but it <coughs> actually made it through. Plunged our temperatures all the way down to 69 degrees in some of the inland areas last night. 69 degrees, can you imagine? It's only mid-November and we almost got down, we got down to 69 degrees for a few minutes. Now by 7 o'clock this morning it was 71 degrees in my backyard and it's about 79 degrees now. Um, but last week I was working on an experiment. I was putting this experimental uh, small high beetle trap in here. Did a quick peek and realized that, uh, oh, it's time for the next step. A few weeks ago, a month ago at this point, I uh, harvested all my supers that were on top of my hurricane hives here, brushed all the bees back in, harvested the honey, brought the frames back out, let them clean them, put them back on top of the hives, let them clean them out, take the remaining nectar and honey down and store it. They got them all cleaned up and polished and I came back out took those boxes off, took them in, put them in the freezer, and, uh, you know, got them prepped for winter. There's another video and all that. No store them until spring. The other thing you have to do down here in South Florida that you don't have to do in the rest of the country is what's about to happen now. My hurricane hive is the same thing as two eight frame boxes stand, stood on top of each other. That's my brood box. Anywhere else in the country where you have freezing weather, you would just leave it be. You know, and most of the time the bottom box becomes completely empty of bees. And they all move up into the top box. And come spring, you either flip the boxes if you're an old time beekeeper or you leave them to draw back down. But if you do that here in South Florida where we don't get freezing temperatures, I checked last night on what last January and what last February's temperatures were. Last January, we had five days that dipped below 50 degrees. February, two days dipped below 50 degrees. Our bees don't really even go into cluster except, you know, kind of loosely. Uh, and the small high beetles don't worry about it at all and the wax moths don't worry about it and that's the wax moth is what we're mostly concerned about here uh, bees work completely with the sun i know it seems counterintuitive particularly here in south florida but once you pass the summer solstice bees start thinking about winter and the queen starts laying less and the hives start reducing. Now, if you've seen me when I was brushing all the bees off of the supers, these hives were packed with bees. And for the next week and a half, two weeks after that, you, you know, even with slatted bottom boards or slatted racks down here and such, they were uh, still bearding a bit on the front because I had packed them. I'm happier with crowded bees than with uncrowded bees. Oh, I need to go get a hive tool, pardon me. Okay, but reduction's gonna happen, reduction's gonna happen, reduction's gonna happen, and here we go. When I was doing this, I did a quick check to see where we stood. I wasn't expecting to do this until December, and right now it's just mid-November, uh, but the bees are reducing, and they all, remember, bees will tend to put their brood over the entrance. Here's the main entrance. Yeah, I do a little side entrance here, but the main entrance is over there. Look at this beautiful brood comb. The bees have done their work in it for the year. 
all the broods out of it, everything's all cleaned up, all prepped for next spring. And if this was the rest of the country, this would be pure happiness. But down here, this is just a wax moth heaven waiting to happen. Look at that beautiful comb. I want that beautiful comb. I don't want the wax moths to have it. And there's not enough bees to cover this comb. Look at that. Beautiful comb. But the bees start consolidating, consolidating, consolidating. And I will do this again. First week in December anyway. Because honestly, by the third week in January... Everything will be on its way uphill. We'll be, they'll, the queen will start laying more, start expanding, and I want to put these back. But I do not want to feed these beautiful combs to the wax moths. Now, come over here close if you would for a minute. Ooh, come on, you. Whoa. Propolis is a little bit cool this morning. You'll notice there's no bees on this side of this frame whatsoever. You look at the next frame over when I break this thing free. Whew. Let's see whether we're taking another one out of here or not right now. There's bees on the inside. Yeah. But what are the bees on the inside doing? Huh. Well, they do actually seem to be putting a bit of nectar in there it's a the next one? well the next one he still has brood on it can you get down there and take a look at it so here's where we're at in the moment three completely empty frames that one has brood. this that one this one has nectar going in on this side oh that's why it was so thick look at that Phew there must have been a uh beetle jail there at some point wow so this is where we stop but bees will be bees and they will get a sneak up sneak up and get ahead of you so first thing that happens is follower board goes in no my wife just asked me if this follower board goes all the way to the bottom. No, <laughs> wouldn't matter anyway because uh, I use a slatted rack above a screen bottom board. So if this board went all the way down and touched the top bars of the slatted rack, they could just go under the slatted rack and up to it. Mm -hmm. And I found out when I was using top bar hives that the follower boards, they wanted the follower boards to go all the way to the screen on the bottom. And... That wasn't great for the bees. I went ahead and trimmed mine off because the area behind the follower board on a slatted rack or on a uh, top bar hive acts just like the slatted rack does on a regular Langstroth hive. The bees, if they've got a couple of empty frames to work on on their side of the slatted rack, well, they're going to work on those frames first. But the excess bees will go under the uh, follower board and hang out in that open area behind the follower board. So on, you know, that's on a top bar hive. And the same holds true here. It's just that if for some reason I were to slip up and not catch them at the right moment, and they decided they wanted to start drawing comb and doing things over here, I want them to have some place to do it other than on a blank piece of uh, frame, I mean, rather blank piece of lid I want them to have some place to do this so that's it I'm gonna do this on all three hives this is an experiment you'll hear about in the near future hopefully the green bowl with the uh, bait in it it's an Australian small high beetle trap didn't see any pictures of it, only descriptions, so I just built it according to the description. 
It'll be a video if it works. If it doesn't work, well, maybe I'll tell you about it, but <laughs> it won't be much of a video. So, that's it. In South Florida, you can't leave your empty comb hanging around. It'll just all get eaten up by the small high beetles. That comb will, not small high beetles, sorry, but it'll get eaten up by the wax moths. Small high beetles, there's small high beetles in that comb. They're kind of wandering around, but they're not laying eggs because they want to lay their eggs where there's something of value for them to, you know, get it. They want to lay them either in nectar or, you know, or honey or even better, pollen, or they'll get into the brood. Uh, so just getting those out of there so the, the wax moths don't get them. And I'm going to go with the other two hives, find out whether or not I need to reduce the hives in there at all. I'm very optimistic by the fact that I saw some nectar being put in here because the moment I'm not feeding uh, and there's enough nectar in the environment that they're actually starting to store some away. So they're actually already thinking about next spring and that's great. So this has been uh, South Florida Beekeeping with Rich. Be sure to like and subscribe. And if you're down here in South Florida, guys, go out and check your hives. And if you've got nice, beautiful, clean uh, brood comb that's just sitting there hanging out, get it out of there, pop it in the freezer to take care of any small hive beetles that are in it, store it, and have it available to put back on your hives in uh, mid-January. But if you leave it out between mid-November and mid-January, it's just food for wax moths. That's it. Have a great day, everyone. We'll talk to you later.